I'm deluded, I'm back yeah. again. Come on, Ian. <laughs>
maybe Cedric at left back and that saves Saka from having to move out or you can go to a back three. But, you know, he might not have necessarily got game time up until this point. Look when Cedric actually got minutes. So hopefully he returns and we have, you know, a young French international, a Brazilian international and an English international, which cost us 100 odd million. Hopefully these can be members of, our, of us for a decade or so. Against St Etienne, they won 4-2. There's still real elements in this game, but I think he showed leadership. I think the first goal was terrible from his teammates slash keeper. And in the highlights, he looks part of it by default. This is what I mean about the team does some collapse stuff. This game was comedy gold. Please go and watch the highlights. Go and see the own goal from St Etienne. It was Sunday League, man. You know, Gwendozi got an assist and, you know, it was a lovely St Etienne goal for the second, as you can see with my side notes. Against Brest, I think it was a standard performance. There was nothing of note. I think he covered really well. His passing was good. He won his battles. He marked well. He, he, he played short and long passes where appropriate, but he remained switched on. Against Basel, they won. Nothing of note. He was playing in the back three. Against Monaco, um, standard performance, 6 out of 10. Not at fault for the goal. I think he marked Volum really well. He stayed with his man. He closed the gaps when he could. You know, he nicked in front when he could. And he, in likewise, he respected when they couldn't win it. Let the attacker do what he needs to do. Um, Again, I'm just watching Saliba. It doesn't really matter what the other players do, but I think there was a free goal. You know, it rebounded off the post, but I think he's gone to sleep. And, at, you know, as a striker... You're always taught to expect things. As a defender, you've got to expect that ball not to go in. And I think he's kept he's kept flat-footed and Martins gets there first. Against Nice people, you know, obviously, they lost against Monaco 1-0. They won 2-1 against Nice, as you can see there. Um, clash of heads left Gururi, who's been linked with us, blooded. It showed his bravery. I think his marking has improved. As I said, he's learning when to get tight. A big part of defending is not always tackling. Sometimes you have to let someone go past you, and I think he done that. Um, he gave away the unnecessary free kick at the death, which ultimately led to the goal. You know, several people lost their men. Um, he lost his man in the result in free kick. And again, it's about remaining switched on. It's... it's not similar, but the best way to paint the picture is you see how Ben White gave away a free kick against Palace and they exploited it. It's similar to that. So I've got no doubt Saliba is going to be a good player, whether it's here or not, it's debatable in the summer. Balogun signed a new deal. Again, when you look at the pressing metrics, passing metrics, he's starting to show his personality on the field. He's obviously bagged against Peterborough and Birmingham recently. You know, Peterborough, he should have had a couple. Birmingham it was a good goal, but it's, you know, he's learning. Now, I know his statistics aren't standing out. At the time of making this, he's got three goals, two assists in 16 comp in sixteen appearances in all comps. 13 have come in the championship. He's doing more. There's a lot more to come. I think more personality can be showed on the field. I expect him to. It's a, you know, it, of course, we'd love our young players to go out on loan they score a million goals and we're talking about them but that's not how it works you know Balogun he's been getting a lot of hype rightly so he's a good player signed a new deal promoted to the first team but you know you're not going to learn much occasionally playing a cup game where in the cup for Arsenal he's off the pace he's gone under Chris Wilder who's been using him off the left been using him in a different formations he's still adjusting physically because he's not completed 90 minutes that many that many times and he's obviously you know, learning to see out the game. Chris Wilder's doing a good job and it could be worth him staying in the championship next season. Although, of course, I would love for him to go to a top division. I think he's taking more shots now. He's understanding the ugly elements. One thing I like about Balogun, he's getting kicked left, right and centre and he's getting up. You know, the purse, everything else. When I see these things, everything's going to pull into place and fall into place. Whether he makes it here is another story. But yeah, man, I think he's doing his thing. Against Millwall, he got kicked all day long. Ballard kicked him as well and there should have been a penalty. They tried to intimidate him. It didn't bang. They beat Peterborough 4-0. Seven out of ten performance. It arguably more. You know, he got 69 minutes. He scored, but he's missed harder chances. I didn't get it. But anyways, he bagged. Chelsea, again, the whole team was out of their depth. And again, I'm only watching Balogun. I don't care respectfully about the other Middlesbrough players because they're not relevant. Shout out to my guy, Bola, who's a former A lender. I don't think the whole team couldn't get into the game. And obviously, I'm being a bit harsh. But when I see them, like, like with the Spurs game, United game and Chelsea, this is kind of where I'm looking at Balogun a bit more. Not necessarily to turn the game on its head, but these are the guys you're going to be playing week in, week out. The whole team was out of it, but he, he couldn't really get into the game. He was out of his depth. He struggled. He ran into congested areas. His team was anonymous. Against Brom, 81 minutes, scored a fantastic curling effort. He only got 30 minutes in the 4-1 defeat to Sheffield United, but I think he tried to provide something, but the game was already done. Um, I've seen these comments online. A lot of his time on loan. Um, he went on to say, "Any this is on Arsenal. Any single player would love to be playing. Love, sorry, any single player would love to be in the side playing well. It makes your job easier. 
I'm looking at them, but I'm also concentrated on what I need to do, concentrating on what I need to do to get into the team and add my qualities. From the outside looking in, it's very good. He then went on to say, my de- my game's definitely become a lot more mature. Um, playing 23s, I could get away with things sometimes. Transitioning to men's football, I've noticed you need to play with your head a bit. A lot of improvement, but a lot more I can do to improve, which is facts. The biggest thing for me is is it means a bit more. It means more than the higher up. It means more the higher up you go. Losing the ball now gives the opposition a chance to score, a chance to do something with the ball that can harm you. There's a lot more pressure on it. And with that pressure, you need to be smart and not to be in that situation. And that's true. 23 foot, we get away with stuff. Bearing in mind, this is his first loan spell. It's my first loan spell. It's obviously very different to how I grew up in, in the academy at Arsenal, but I'm enjoying every minute of it. Um, there is just so many opportunities, so many things, sorry, that I wasn't aware of. I wasn't in the environment to learn as in playing men's football. So I now, so I think now that I have that opportunity, I'm just trying to absorb as much as I can. Exactly. Um, and then obviously, I think his gaffer said, I think Flo is doing what he needed to do. And we probably should have done to time when is the best moment to do that. He's having the right exposure. He's playing in a different formation, a different rule under a manager, as you would have in a professional career. A club with a huge history, you can see how he's developing. So this is giving us information and it's going to give us more detail about the next best move for him to keep developing because he has and we want was doing to the Premier League. And you can see that it's not fair on him to assess just in certain moments whether he can or not do it. So he needed that pathway. He needed that exposure. He needs to go through good and difficult moments. He needs to be able to adapt and find himself in the dressing room and develop the importance that's going to be required to play at this level. I think he's doing really well. And that's facts. You know, Wilder, Wilder, sorry, Chris Wilder said he's been coached by fabulous coaches in the academy at Arsenal right into the 23s and first team. So, you know, he ain't going to learn an incredible amount. From a tactical point of view, possibly because we play a different style and system, but other responsibilities are what he'll learn from. When you're playing in the first team and there's always three points on the line, you might play in front of 30,000 at home, but then all of a sudden you've got to go to Millwall and play in front of that atmosphere and that environment and deal with that. I think that's part of the development of young players. Facts. He's a talented young boy and we'd have liked to have given him a few more chances, both him and Connolly, but I thought they were both... They were both bright right away, right the way through. And hopefully he'll come away knowing he, if he ever has to play in this environment or thinking of, of Arsenal playing away in Europe, where it's sometimes not easy, he can handle it. Moving to Brook Norton Coffee, he, you know, he bust case for his head, but one, you know, keep it, don't let people rattle you. But I'm, listen, I'm a fullback, so I'm going to love this. I think Brook Norton Coffee's got a good opportunity of making it Arsenal. Let's relax, let's take time. Remember, he's 18, 19. He's got a lot to work on. And you see it sometimes he's been given the runaround by certain wingers in this league, in, in, in League One. But other than that, for someone that's never played senior football, brother, he's taken to this like a duck to water. And, and it's, low, it's, it's the way he's taken to it, it gives me confidence about loaning people out sooner. Mentally, the man's not phased in a positive way. He's always learning. He doesn't think he's accomplished anything. And he must, and, and you can see it with the way he's always soaking in information, you know. So he's always receptive to learning. Mentally, he's not rattled away from home and at home saying that he got into handbags. Um, you know, he's shown his personality. Sometimes I'm seeing him playing forward of course naturally there's things he can improve and getting caught flat-footed being aware of your runners knowing when to play not to play these are things you'd expect but yeah he's doing quite well when you know in the next 18 months or by the time he's 20 i'll be amazed if he's not in arsenal first team we just got to slow cook these players like our terrorist said um and obviously, Michael Apperton said on him, people, as you can see, I got these before. He said, I don't want Arsenal ringing me up saying, what have you said that for? But I've been saying it behind the scenes. I think he'll play for Arsenal's first team on a regular basis. It might not be for a couple of years, but it's definitely going to happen. He'll hopefully continue his progression over the next few games. There's one or two things that I think I can help him with. But by the time he goes back to Arsenal, he'll be much better. And hopefully it's a championship loan or being in and around Arsenal's first team, probably going out on loan again. Um, the man himself has said, since I've come in, I think I've improved game by game. There's still a lot of areas I need to improve in and things for me to learn. And one thing I like is very grounded and that's down to him as a human being, his family and his upbringing. And of course, Arsenal's coaching. And of course, he's a bloody good footballer. It's about getting minutes and using them to affect the game. That's what is most important for me right now. 
I've seen I can play in League One, but it's about having an effect each time you step onto the pitch. You see what my man is saying? You see what man's saying? He went on to say, I came on loan to get as many minutes as possible to play in senior football. My loan is going well, and they, obviously Arsenal, are happy with my improvements and progressions, so we'll see what happens when I get back. I think coming here is the best thing for me and getting a run of games in men's football has helped me a lot more than playing in the 23s. But it's not as easy as coming from a Premier League club and playing elsewhere in the Football League. It's a different ball game and it's a lot harder than playing 23s because of the physicality and the speed and the games. You know, there's no point being able to do it on Sunday if Tuesday you can't. And what I like about academy football, not, not academy football, sorry, the senior game, they don't care that you're not on coffee Arsenal potential. They're saying Lincoln are there, we need a right back, boom. Or Middlesbrough, we need a striker, boom. What are you doing? And that's the harsh realities of football um, and things. So, yeah, man, by the time I, he's 20, I think he'll be part of our first team. His passing could be a bit more consistent, but I love his calmness on the ball, the dribbling. He's strong as well. Modern day fullback, man. It's just a bit case of everything falling into place. Once that happens, I've got no concerns about the young man, if I'm completely honest with you. Um, against Charlton, they won 2-1. He had a test in first half by the Charlton winger, but he came back stronger in the second. 0-0 against Sunderland. He missed the last game, the latest game, by the way, with a hamstring knock. I think he was playing in the wing-back role. I think he had a slow start, but he caused um, Sunderland some issues. He tried to better yet as the game went on. Um, I think they were trying to gang up on him in the defeat to Rotherham. He had a busy first half and his things like that. There's improvements to make. Uh, against Wimbledon in the 2-0 victory, obviously the red card's been rescinded, but he had handbags. So I guess just keep your heads in because you bit the bait that my man gave and you got sent off. Unfortunately, Ryan, Ryan is injured, people. He made four appearances for crew on loan. He's, there's rumours his season is done because he's had surgery. Tyrese John Jules is still progressing in terms of fitness and things. He's still only played 18 minutes at Sheffield Wednesday on loan. He's expected to return in late April. So by God's grace, that's a couple of weeks. Uh, his gaffer said, we saw Tyrese last week before going back to Arsenal. He's on the he's back on the treadmill. And from there, he'll get, he'll go out onto the grass. We still think he's weeks away. It's 50-50. But if we do see him again, it'll be right towards the end of the season. Every precaution is being taken. So you probably might not see him till May. Now, the thing with Matt Smith, he's, he's putting a lot of energy into his performances, but you're wanting a bit more. Either way, you know, his future is probably away from Arsenal. I don't quite think he's got it. 38 appearances in League One this year. You know, lot at the time of checking, which could have changed, you know, because I haven't seen the last games that they played or highlights or not updating myself. They've got Doncaster have one win in seven. So, as I said, the harsh realities of being a footballer. Stuck in, he won the ball back a, a huge amount of times. Past that, there's nothing. He came off in the defeat to Charlton with a dead leg. He had a chance but did not score. Once again, the work rate's there. But as you can say, see here, you're looking for a bit more. Um, they've also lost 2-1 to Wickham. Once again, he puts himself about. He tries to lead the press. He's proactive, but it just you can't quite put your finger on it, but you're wanting a bit more. Now, I should update this to Hibernian, but as you know, Ross, um, you know, Rotman said Rod, he's not at Ross County anymore. Harry Clark, you know, he's at Hibernian, probably basically a permanent move. It's unfortunate because he's been injured, but this just shows football. He came back and scored at, at scored um, recently, people, against Dundee. Um you know, he, he had a shot and it was in the first half and it was, you know, it was worthy of a goal. It's from the edge of the area. It's quite a good, quite a good one. Um, these are all irrelevant people. Um, not really, but you get the point. He's been injured, but he's he's done well to come back. Um, I think these are from his previous time at, at his last club. I didn't delete them. So, yeah, just focus on the first one. Um, as you can see, he's 21 years of age. He's made 18 appearances in Scotland across the two. You know, football is a weird game. As you can see, he's had a progressive season, but he's also unfortunately missed three months. As I said, in January, he signed Hibernian. It didn't get going for him. Um, but such as football, he's come back and scored. And his manager, Maloney, has said, I was really pleased for Harry as an individual. He has, in, he has worked incredibly hard and it was a good moment in the, in the game for him. I've got options with Harry. He can play any of the wing-back positions, as you saw on, uh, um, in this game. He can play as a full-back. He can play as a centre-back. And you might just need to do that, you know, really and truly. You could see against Dundee United that we've missed him. We missed that quality, speed and power. Anything I want to do with the team, Harry's got flexibility. He can fit into it. I see him as a big attacking threat, particularly with what we have at the moment in that attacking area. And they've also got injuries. So, again, he's, you got to remember, he, he was initially a striker. 
So he's got opportunities, particularly since the January transfer window. We don't have great speed in the final third. And Harry gives us that. He's a def definite attacking threat. So he's put himself in the shop window. I say 2 2's had a terrible time with injuries. And he's, he's 23 24 now. His future does lie away from Arsenal. But he won the Papa John's trophy, people. He was played in the final against Sutton, where you also saw Craig Eastman. Um, he came off the bench and bagged the 90th minute equaliser, people. He's had a terrible time with injuries. Obviously, they went on to win. You know, in his 40 minutes, he did well. And it's a good moment for him because he's had a terrible time with injuries, people. He got 69 minutes in the 3-0 L against Shrewsbury Town. He needs a clean run without injury. There's talent to have a footballing career there. He's got nine appearances for Robin so far. Now, I think Muller was signed to put in the shop window. I have not seen him play for this team, but it, for F he's made it, uh, eight appearances for FC Dendos. He's got one goal and he's got two goals across the two loan spells he has t undertaken this season. Daniel Ballard, who, again, another one who had a, is having a good season, minus the bit that's cut out with injury. He's someone, again, him, Clark, they're into the shop window. I believe their, their futures lay away from this club. He played in the 2-2 against Luton, you know. Luton are a highly energetic team, and I felt that whole team is in Millwall felt the pressure. He had a very busy afternoon, people. Um, and in side notes, it was a good day for Halen because you saw James Shea in goal. You saw Benny Cofobi plays for Millwall. 2-0 L against Stoke. I think he battled, but his team struggled defensively a lot. He's only one man. He tried to be progressive with his passes, didn't really bang. Millwall did miss a penalty to get slightly back into it, and he was slightly involved in the build-up, which led to that. In the 2-0 victory against Huddersfield, the foe, got a double. Um, I did think Ballard kind of, not an assist, but made himself difficult to mark, made himself a nuisance. He was denied a close-range header, if I can remember correctly, by Huddersfield. Um, in the nil-nil against Borough, I think he was making some dodgy tackles and whatnot. And actually, when they played Middlesbrough, again, he should, probably should have had a penalty given against him, people. But he's doing what he can, man, at 22 years of age, building on a solid loan spell at Blackpool, doing what he can at Millwall, capped at international level. This is someone that probably his future lies away from the club. They lost recently to Swansea. He missed a not he missed a good header, and it looked like a fairly he had a fairly competent game. Now Mavropanos is meaty. It's meaty, you know. He's actually conceded three penalties this season. Four, if you can see, if you consider Greece. He only needs one more to get David Luiz total. So I don't think this is the one. If we can get a sell on clause, which we look like he's doing fair play. He's made 46 appearances in Bundesliga during his time there. He's got 25 top flight appearances for Stuttgart. That one there is gone. Now we heard Reese Nelson. What they want to keep Reese Nelson at Feyenoord, considering he's only got a year or left on his deal. That's going to be interesting, but. He You know, again, if you look at the Dutch press, they're not too happy with his performance against Ajax. But from what I saw of the game, five ads didn't really do much. And he's been saving his best form for the Conference League. You know, he got to play Partizan twice. He, you know, he got a, he played 81 minutes when they won 5-2 against them and got an assist. He scored um, in, his, in his just over an hour when they beat them 3-1. At the moment, he has played 17 times in that top flight, people, to build on his 23 appearances in, in, in the Premier League and his 23 appearances in the Bundesliga. It's still crazy to only consider he's 22. I don't want to give up on him, but see it happening at Arsenal, depending, unless a miracle happens or people get moved on. And... You know, he's only made five starts, but the potential, the talent's there, man. I don't want to give up on him because, man, you see, I, I started finding Arteta's previous comments. He said, it's very difficult at the moment with the players. We have to be able to fit him, Nelson, in. Um, I feel sorry that we don't have other competitions to use him because he deserves much more. He doesn't play, and that's my fault. Um, pre this is all just mashed up comments. I know Reese because I coached him when he was 16, and straight away he caught my eye. He's a boy that is willing to learn and loves the game, but I think he's been a little bit confused in the last few years. What direction he's had to take, some decisions he's had that he made. Now I can see he really wants it and I think he has the potential to do whatever he wants. He needs guidance. He needs a little bit of stick. He needs and he's up for it. I put him I put him to play and I trust him because he wants it and I think he can deliver. Now, depending on what happens with Pepe, he might get an opportunity, but Arteta believes in you. He did say to go on loan last year, but you got to wonder why you're not convinced. Why you're not convincing him to start, people? Um, you can go away on loan, but I was expecting a little more from his side. He needs to take responsibility as well because if he wants to play for this club every three days, when you step in there, you have to be almost perfect. And at the moment, I see this kind of attitude and desire. What I will say is that Reese has the potential to do whatever he wants. If he wants to do it, wants to learn and wants to challenge himself, he can be a top, top player for this football club. So I don't want to give up on him yet for this very reason, but we might have to be cruel to be kind, you know.
it's like a relationship. Sometimes you and that woman, or whatever you don't want to do, you might not reach your full potential. Like you, you, you get it. You might not be the best boyfriend for her, but to someone else, you might be loving and whatever. And the girl the same. And maybe Reese Nelson has to go any go somewhere else to reach this potential. Um, it is what it is. That's good when he was young. When he was young, that everything was a bit too easy for him and that his priorities are now in place to push on. I think we're all confused at some stages in our career. Even when you do that well, people talk about you. You tend to relax. And when you see the pictures as well, a little bit dirty, I think his picture is now very clear. What he wants, what we want from him, and I trust him. Um, and Reese Nelson, on joining final, he said, I got here and I got a knock in training, so it kept me behind. This is what I want. I need the confidence from everyone behind me to give me the drive to keep going. That's why I chose a club like Feyenoord because I felt like it gives me the confidence and it's really good for me to carry on growing as a player. And you know what? You know, you've taken big challenges. You went to Germany. I don't want to talk about Torreira, but he's doing quite well. He's probably one of our best loanees. He's even scoring goals, loving, loving time in Italy. Hopefully that puts him in the shop window to stay there permanently, people. Bellerin has made 28 appearances for Batiste in the league at the time. He started the last two games against Celta Vigo and Osasuna. Um, you know, of the last eight games available, he's made seven starts. So hopefully put him in the shop window. Reece Nel I mean... Reese Nelson's one thing, but Ainsley Maitland now it hasn't happened, has it? He's been on the bench in the last five games since the 2 2 draw with Verona. It's just never really got going at Roma, in it? And probably just going to have to sort a move out, you know. You're sitting on the bench for Roma, you've only played 90 minutes twice. So why aren't Jose Mourinho and, and, and Arteta giving you opportunities? He's at a crossroads, man. You know, he's still young, but you're 24 years of age. You won an FA Cup, you played for your country, you've played over 100 times for Arsenal. Now you really need to sit down and deep what you need to do. Completely off topic, but Pablo Maria was sent off for Napoli. Um, and you could see the problems when defending versus pace, but he's made seven appearances for Udinese. I think these are some general points. And in relation to the summer, it's unclear what we're doing with Nelson slash Ainsley, although it probably lies away from this club. Nice to see we're going to make a profit from Mavropanos. Badly wish we could keep Guendouzi. Really wish it worked out for Torreira. And it's nice to see for me the hey, Lem boys, obviously Brook Norton, Coffee, Balligan doing their thing. Badly want Tyrese John Jules to have a strong end to the season because I think he's got potential. He just needs to stay fit. Um, Harry Clark, Dan Ballard, nice to see they're basically putting themselves in the shop windows. Of course, there's a bunch of other players on loan people. Truthfully, these are the only ones of relevance. And, you know, you look at someone like Carl Hein, he's unfortunate that he got injured after he was starting to play for Reddings. be back again but yeah these are just my two pence on how our players are developing away from the club thank you for listening and taking me in on that note i'm out man that's all i got to say <laughs>